and welcome to Stop Now, a social experiment enterprise where we stop, listen, and share. Welcome back to our talk show. I am Nate, and uh, it is good to be back. It is good to be uh, talking again with the team here at Stop Now. And so let me introduce the team here at Stop Now that we have here this week. Of course, uh, we have Ithakar is back with us. Ithakar, how are you, sir? Good, thank you. I hope you're also doing good. Yes, thank you. I am. I am. It's a it's a good day. It's a good day. So I'm I'm happy to be here. Uh, and of course, we have a mayor is here with us. A mayor, how are you? Yeah, I'm good. How are you, Ned? I'm good. I'm good. Always good to see you, man. Always good to see you. Uh, and it's always good to see everybody watching. Uh, so we appreciate you for tuning in to this edition of the talk show. Uh, and of course. You know, we for 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 years, for years, I can say it's years because it was actually like a couple years for years. J.K. was the man behind the curtain. But uh, right now, Shiva is the captain of the ship. And so, Shiva, good to see you again, brother. Yes. Thank you. Like Nate, like I'm happy to uh, have you. And uh, I think uh, there is no guest for today. I, I and- think it's. It's always kind of hard to get guests in the summertime. And I think maybe maybe JK's on the beach somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> he may be. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. but yes, yeah, so we, we don't have a guest this week, but we do have the team here. Uh yeah. so again, it's it's good to have everybody here this week. Uh Shiva, uh what, what did yeah. you want to discuss this week on the talk show? Yes, like uh right. I uh, we'll discuss about the mix up things. So um, uh, the very first point is that uh, yesterday also we have discussed about it. Uh, just want to know the Nate's view, what Nate's think, think about it. Why uh, the people across the globe think that the U.S. is the best place for job and why people mm. running towards, I mean, uh, U.S. Even they have other choices like U.K. is also a good choice. Europe is also a good choice. The other countries where in the currency is or the economy is more stronger than U.S., but why people prefer to come to U.S.? I think part of it is kind of what we talked about last time. It's a car where if if you're in America, you look at Hollywood or New York City, you know, as as the place to be, even though both of those cities do have their own problems. You know, they do have their own issues with the economy, with homelessness, you know, a lot of different things. And I think that's how it is with America, because people have been kind of told the story of the American dream for years and you know uh, people like in america and also people in other countries like if you can make it to america and you can you know work hard and you can achieve your dreams and sometimes that's not always true but the the mythology i guess is car of america you know the land of opportunity it's still out there and it's still a very appealing to people from other countries it's like if i can if i can make it to america i've got a shot what do you think? Are they come for, to enjoy the life or for earnings? I think both. You know, it's, it's education, it's uh, financial opportunities. Uh, some people are coming to America for religious freedom, which I, news newsflash: America is not <laughs> not always the best place for religious freedom, depending on where you end up in the country. Uh, but I, I think that it's opportunity would be the big word I'd use. Is a car. It's it's. It's I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to take a chance for myself and, and my family and see if I can take care of the take hold of this opportunity. And I think that's kind of what draws people, you know, the money, the education, you know, the there are so many things going on in America with tech right now. I think that's, you know, something that can be appealing to people. Well, uh, can you tell me one reason why? Uh, I mean, in fact, we talk about London or UK, right? Mm-hmm. The same thing is uh, the people are getting what in America people are getting, right? So yep. why they're London, the uh, UK, Canada? You know, we talked about Canada last time. You know, you can make a comparison there. Um, but I think again, like I I live in Virginia, and I think that we have some great cities in the state of Virginia that can compare to a New York or LA or Chicago. But there's there's something attached to those cities uh, if the car like a, a prestige, you know, there's I'm, I made it in New York City. That means I can make it anywhere. And it's like 
yes, London is great. Uh, you know, the UK is great. Canada is great. I think Canada might even be better <laughs> than the United States at a lot of things. And like we talked about last time, but it's still that mentality of if I can make it in America, then I've made it, you know, I've really made it. Well, I, I mean, if you look at on, on, on to the other side, people when think talk about Paris, yeah, Paris. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So in the, 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 the city of lights. <laughs> yeah. So Europe is also a good choice in terms of economy. Also, Europe yes. is also very good, but the lifestyle freedomness and the lifestyle uh, democracy these are everything people and the most important thing is the language in us the people are, i mean uh, always speak english wherein mm -hmm. if you go to any european countries you will find various languages they cannot learn english is an is an mm -hmm. international language right so that's one of the reason so when we talk about us is the highest job creator or the opportunities are highest in us the people comes from across the globe so what do you look things in terms of uh, crime where the crowd is there obviously the crime will always be there yes and and with america you have something that you don't have in a place like london that you don't have uh, you know, I, I lived in uh, Japan for a little while and loved it over there. You know, you've you've got this thing in America called guns and <laughs> the, 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 the freedom to have guns, you know, the right to bear arms is in the Constitution. And of course, I support that. But also we've seen every month there's a mass shooting. There's a shooting at a school. You know, there's a shooting at a grocery store. We've seen shootings at churches. And so I think when you talk about crime in America, there's that extra element of it's one thing for two people to have an argument or a fight, but if one of them can just pull out a gun, that changes everything. And I think that America, you've got a lot of, of, of crime that is based around guns and gun control, but also it's a car. I think mental health is something that America is still kind of figuring out. And there's a lot of people that are, you know, dealing with police or dealing with the government or authority figures. And it's like, maybe, maybe we shouldn't just throw this person in jail. Maybe we should get this person some help, get this person some therapy, because I think there's a lot of crime that maybe could have been avoided if we okay. took mental health more seriously. Right. And what do you think that the most, these, these crimes are being done by insiders or outsiders? I would say insiders, honestly. Like, obviously, you know, outsiders do crimes as well. But I think, you know, America has its own special homegrown recipe <laughs> for crime. You know, whether, whether you're talking about, you know, violent crimes like we like we were talking about it's a car or there's a lot of blue collar, uh, excuse me, white collar crimes that happen in America when you got banks and, and government agencies that are taking money out of people's pockets. You know, we just had a, a story come out. I uh, think about it, a couple of years ago, and it was about Mississippi and Brett Favre, who was a quarterback, you know, from Mississippi, he played for the Green Bay Packers, was stealing money that was supposed to go to COVID relief for poor neighborhoods. And you got a millionaire and his buddies who are stealing this money from COVID relief. And so like, I think crime is everywhere. You know, you're never going to go to a country without crime. But I think in America, there's so many different varieties, so many flavors uh, of crime here in America. So what do you look the things? I mean, uh, I, I, JK always used to use this term, modern slavery. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right? So what is your view on to this? I mean, um, uh, what kind of crime is being taking place uh, for the outsiders, like who comes uh, with mm -hmm. H-1B visa? For, to work here in the United States. So what yeah. do you think that what kind of crimes are taking and what course of action has is required to take wherein this is not or this kind of action is not being taken effectively? So what is your view on it? I, th I think you know that's a good question because I honestly did not know about a lot of these crimes until I started working with Stop Now. You know, when we're talking about modern slavery and human trafficking and the way that some of these H-1B visa users have 
been kind of pulled into that life because it's it's people are preying on them. You know, they they know that these people are vulnerable when they're coming over with these visas. And, you know, we've heard uh, Harold's story. You know, we've heard the story of a lot of people who have gotten trapped into that life. And we've heard stories of people that have gotten out and survived that lifestyle. And so I think a lot of people don't understand this kind of specific type of modern slavery at the car. You know, when, when people hear about kidnapping they think about you know taking <laughs> you know they think about you know a movie like that they don't think about like hey these are people coming over to work and they get snatched up or they get stuck in this job that's not really paying them what they need to be paid and so now they're a slave to the job and so i think you know stop now has done a lot to help educate people you know I, it's educated me because this is not something i really knew about three or four years ago well for example now you are capable of earning $100 per hour, right? So now if you're, since if you're H-1B candidate holder, mm -hmm. or if, if you're coming through H-1B and coming through some employer, so how much they will pay? They will pay you around $40 and they'll mm -hmm. keep $60 with them. So it, it's a kind of, you know, uh, injustice happening, yeah. right? Now the market is so huge. So the employers are taking benefit because people are coming around the globe. And so many people are working here. Now think about it. How mm. they have been, you know, uh, I mean, earning money and uh, how the injustice is being happening with the em employees. And, and it's so many levels to it, too. You know, it's car like uh, when, you know, you guys are doing the experiment and you're talking to all these recruiters. And I remember, you know, JK used to say that the recruiters are kind of they are the perpetrators and the victims at the same time because they're kind of stuck in this job because they got to put food on the table and, you know, put clothes on the kids backs. And so it's ultimately to me the biggest blame goes to the corporation because you've got yeah. these billion dollar corporations that are taking advantage of people. And like you said, it's an injustice. And we've heard a lot of stories about people that have been stuck by this and not gotten paid and been moved all around the country and still, you know, are making a very small amount. And so yes. I, I don't know, you know, that's the question though. Like, what can we do about it? We've talked to lawyers, we've talked to experts and it's like, I don't think things are going to change until more people are aware and they put pressure on the government to do something. Yeah, and just like, you know, for let's say, I mean, people always use toothpaste, right? Every day. Mm -hmm. Now, if you hike the price of a toothpaste like for 50 cents or 20 cents, now think about it in one day, single day, how many people buy toothpaste? For example, 1 million. Mm -hmm. So think about it that how much they are earning by hiking this. I mean, hiking ten cents or twenty cents or fifty cents. Yep. The same way, the number of employees they are getting increased day by day, and if they are charge, I mean, taking or uh, taking the benefit of forty dollar per, per per employee. So if one employer has, example, let's say ten employees, mm -hmm. twenty employees. So think about it, how much they are earning per hour basis. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you're, got, you're doing hard work. And, who's and the employees paid? are like, um, I, I can't remember the young lady's name, but we spoke to her a, a couple months ago. Uh, and she was the uh, immigration lawyer. Uh, and she talked about Ithacar, like how trapped the employees are because they think if they say something or report this injustice, they could get deported. You know, they could get sent back home and, you know, they don't want that because, again, they're here for an opportunity. And so you get stuck in this system that is taking advantage of the of the employee and just putting more money into these corporations that already have billions of dollars in them. This I mean, we it, this cannot be stopped. That's for sure, because um, here the contribution is required. It, the contribution means. Uh, from all corners, the people should come out. For example, I mean, uh, social media, we should make use of social medias. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
a lot of people's contribution even to support it so that it can it can be stopped otherwise uh, it cannot be stopped but yes uh, we can make aware of people or the at least the awareness part can be done i think part of the issue uh if the car is when you talk about the h1b visa most americans would tend to if they even know what it is they would just lump it into this big immigration issue which is such a political thing and you got people that just argue on both sides and nobody's really listening and i think trying to get something like the h1b visa either abolished or amended um it it takes somebody that that can speak to people and let them understand in kind of simple terms uh you know like hey this is what happens to these workers when they come over this is what can happen and what kind of injustice can be done to them and you wouldn't like that if that happened to you i think you have to make it relatable you know for most americans because they don't they they, they don't care and you know mm -hmm. it's 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 sad to say that if the car but for the most part most americans are just focused on i gotta go to work work this nine to five <laughs> i got kids to feed i got a wife I'm focused on me and and everything else is is out there, you know. I, I'm not bothered what what is H one B. Right, right. <laughs> and so you have to find a way to make it relatable so that they'll be like, okay, I understand how that you know is is uh, something that needs to be fixed. Uh, but that's the question: how do you how do you make people understand? How do you make people care? Uh, I'll rather say H one B itself. Uh, uh, I mean, injustice because. Uh, uh, you know why I'm saying because uh, the H1B candidate doesn't get that much of opportunity as compared to green card holder or US citizen. Mm -hmm. You're giving author uh, authorization or authority to work here, but you're limited to work. You do not have the right. choice as uh, your citizen or green card holder has. Yeah, I think most of Americans they don't know what is H1B. They're not bothered about it. Why should bother about it? They're they're getting job, getting paid, and earning money, and just living the life. I don't know what is happening in the background. I mean, recruitment industry. What is happening? It's not that. It's not their cup of tea. Why mm. should they bother about it? Right? Yeah. It, it doesn't affect them, so they don't care. Yeah. But uh, that uh, I came to know that uh, it, uh, there is uh, many jobless people living in USA till now. Mm -hmm. But why they are hiring people from other countries? <laughs> so that's always the question. Like, like you said, the America does still have a homelessness problem right now. And you've got a lot of people who are unemployed or even underemployed where they're working, but they're not making enough money to really do much. You know, they can't pay for all their bills, you know. And so I think part of the reason why a lot of corporations will use work from workers from overseas is because they feel like they can get over on. Like yeah, that's the thing. Like we, uh, one thing, Lee, uh, that's the thing. Like we want to educate Americans, like uh, the H one B visa holders, uh, making them as an unemployed because of H right. one B. Like uh, Americans getting uh, unemployed, and you want to cancel H one B. That's the only way to educate them, like mm -hmm. against against h1b it will yes. not happen because it will impact directly on the revenue i mean it's yes, i mean yes. h1b yes yes we uh, b only thing to stop h1b we need to educate americans the, that they got unemployed because of h1b visa they easily got h1b and the employee getting the thing benefit and you lost your money that's the only way to educate mm -hmm. americans and that, okay. that's the thing. Like they they, lost, stop everybody from outside to come here for me. <laughs> well, and that, that's the thing. If the car, like the big thing, like because I used to live in California, and I remember, you know, when you had a lot of Mexican immigrants who yeah. would come and work in the farms and whatnot, and you had Americans like, oh, they're they're coming and they're taking our jobs, but they. <laughs> 
I didn't see them going out to apply to work at the farm. You know, like the, they're taking these jobs, but these are jobs that the Americans aren't working. And so I don't, I don't understand the, the hate. Benefit by birth. Mm. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> okay, that's the general thing. Like I want to discuss with Neat. Like, uh, mm. what do you think about like a family life on Americans? Mm -hmm. Because of all the crimes and all other things, like they leaving their parents uh, after they attend the age of fifteen, and the family life is gone for them, and they are uh, become an island. Mm -hmm. and they're living their life whatever they want and how all the americans living their life without a uh, family because mm -hmm. we actually indians and other asian countries we can't believe without parents or without life without a family joint family when in yes fact. maybe joint family it's a family like with the parents american doesn't uh seen uh, their parents after 15 or 16. I think a lot of Americans, you know, not all, but I think a lot of Americans don't have a lot of, you know, the mm -hmm. the same kind of respect for older people that mm -hmm. maybe we used to, you know, mm -hmm. where like I like I'll work, you know, go to a job and I'll see, you know, somebody in his 70s or 80s who hadn't seen their kids in 10, 15 years, you know, because that relationship is just not there anymore. I think part of it is just, you know, you got kids in America that I feel like kids now are smarter mm -hmm. than they've ever been because of technology. But yeah. there's also a disconnect because, you know, and I see it with my nieces, like they're very smart, but where's the older person to teach them wisdom? You know, knowledge and wisdom are two different things. Mm -hmm. And I think kids are really smart but I don't know if they're wise. And the only way to get wise is to get older or to have somebody older kind of be there for you. And so when you have the family kind of, you know, not breaking up Shiva, but kind of not being as solid as it used to be, um, I think it can be an issue. I think another thing is we've got a lot of different social issues that, that are kind of dividing families now, whether you're talking politics or whether you're talking you know, we, if you've got a family where the parents are anti-LGBTQ, right, and the kids are gay or trans or bi or whatever, there's all there's that friction there. And so to me, I, like I've been lucky, I've been blessed to have a pretty strong family unit with my parents and my sister and, you know, my nieces now and, you know, our extended family um, in, in Mississippi and in Texas. Uh, but I know that's not the case for everybody in America, especially now. I want to share an incident. I was working uh, uh, in a process where I had to speak to Americans, Canada people, Australia. So uh, there was a day on, uh, it was a Mother's Day. So, mm -hmm. so one customer wished me a happy Mother's Day. I said, thank you very much. And I wish you the same. And uh, let me tell you, uh, for me, every day is a Mother's Day for me because uh, mm. we're staying along with our family and uh, we're staying along with our parents. So, so every day is Mother's Day for me. It's not a specific day in a year for, is a Mother's Day for me. Every day is Mother's Day for me. So it's a wow, what's such a wonderful sentence that you said, and it's good to hear. She was, I mean, he was very happy mm. with my statement. So yes, I mean in India, I mean, uh, I mean people cannot think about uh, to live uh, without parents. Well, every country has their own culture and trend, yeah. even in fact, which is kept happening from the previous time, so it cannot be changed. Yeah, that's why I'm asking. Okay. Like uh, without the family bonding, all mm -hmm. the human being are living as an island. And they think whatever they want to do. And all the crime may be happening because of their mental pressure without uh, anybody is not like any family members is not there to show them what is wisdom and what is the correct way to live their life uh, because of all the crimes and they easily uh, getting into the crime. And I think part of, part of the thing, Shiva, is when you look at America, one of the 
kind of ideas that we're all told in America growing up is independence. Yeah, and yeah. so I think especially when you when you because I remember I was kind of like this when I was a teenager, too. Like you just want to be an adult. You want to have your own life, you know, kind of separate from your family, separate from your parents. You want to be independent. And I think the thing is, eventually you're going to find a family somewhere, whether it's your actual family or whether, you know, you talk about crime, a gang, part of the appeal of gangs to kids is it's kind of a family, you know, political movements. Like we saw those people that ran up on the Capitol on January 6th. Like I'm sure they felt like they were, they were a family. And so you might not have like your biological family or, or your, you know, your close relatives, but it's very human. You know, Shiva, I think that's what you're kind of getting at to need that connection, that family connection. So if you don't have it at home, you're going to find it somewhere else. And that somewhere else isn't always positive. I think, I mean, the, the age limit should, they should increase uh, f- from 15 to at least 20 so that the maturity can take place and then they mm-hmm. can, they can think about, judge about it, think about it, what is right or what is wrong. Yes. This can, uh, this should happen. No, this, uh, this thing I raised it because I saw on video, like interview or uh, on a Hollywood t- television for a uh, Indian actress, Aishwarya Rai. And the interviewer, an American, and he asking uh, her like, uh, "How you living with your parents? You are still mm. living with your parents." He separately asking her, like, uh, "You are living with your parents? All Indians living with their parents?" Mm. Uh, he, he, I, 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 on, when I saw the interview, like, uh, I really surprised the uh, Hollywood uh, other. Americans still seeing Indians or, or like the bonding with family is something wrong. Mm-hmm. Like they, <laughs> they didn't have any independent or, or they dependent on the family. I don't think that's wrong or right. I don't want to say it, but uh, that's a really surprise for American you know, living with parents. It's actually they have been. I mean, seen this culture from the previous time. Yes, this is happening. This happened with their parents, and the same thing happened with their forefathers. Mm-hmm. This is happening, so they have adopted it in their mind that yes, this is going to happen in his life as well. So he is ready. Before that, you know, fifteen years or so of age, he is ready by his mind that he is yeah, the, going to yeah, be independent. The, yes, that's the thing. Like uh, if they can't give love with their parents and how can they uh, give a love with their couples like a uh, wife <laughs> or husband um, what do you think about the diverse and mutual understanding is missing there and what's happening for a uh, husband and wife like in between they can choose and they can live uh, like one or two months or three months mm. I, I, it's really surprised like uh, for Americans to live with their wife and husband for a year or something. What's happening? There? It depends on the bonding. <laughs> yes. Bonding. It yes. on the bonding. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I think with, with the divorce rate, like it's, it's mm-hmm. something where, again, I think a lot of things can be tied in together where you talk about, you know, that family relationship. I think yeah. that plays into the relationship between a husband and a wife or a wife and a wife or a husband and a husband. You know, it can play into that because that's kind of your foundational uh, roots in terms of how you deal with people. I think another thing is I don't know if people realize how <laughs> how mm. permanent like marriage can be. You know what I mean? Like, I think people get get excited. Right. They get caught up in the 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 romantic stuff and like oh i love this person i'm gonna be with them forever but marriage is actually a job like marriage is is work (laughs) you have to put work into it and i don't know if people are ready for that uh but yes it's always a good time having these conversations and again if everybody watching uh go to stop dash now.org for more information about stop now and the h1b visa program uh and and why it is an injustice as Ithacar said uh but that's gonna do it so i want to again thank uh amir uh for joining us uh Ithikar, good good conversation Ithikar, always good to see you sir 
Thank you. And of course, uh, Shiva, the, the, the captain of the ship. Uh, thank you again, Shiva. And we will do this again uh, next time.